And, and I said, Ben, is that good? And Ben said, Adam, for a great culture in engineering, it's not only good, it's perfect. Welcome. I wanted to start by kind of introducing Adam to you. Um, and you know, when we made the investment originally in Flow Living, uh, you know, many of you had a lot of questions. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how it's going and how the partnership works. And it really kind of goes back to when we looked at what he had done at WeWork and looked at his amazing strengths and then the things that happened there. Um, we thought that things would be very, very different uh, in a partnership between Andreessen Horowitz and Adam. And here's why. You know, if you're in venture capital, you know that most venture capitalists have what I would call a judgmental relationship with the entrepreneur, um, as opposed to a collaborative relationship with the entrepreneur. And it's just a, a very specific thing. And we always thought that, you know, Adam, you know, coming out of a kibbutz, you know, not having uh, experience with venture capital before and so forth, if he had a kind of partner that was collaborative, given all his strengths, we could build something really special. And I'll just say, so from the beginning, um, you know, starting with alignment, Adams put $350 million of his own money into Flow Living alongside us. So we're full partners as an investors, and then we try to be full partners as we work together. And in everything we've done from how we think about the business to recruiting and so forth, it's just been an amazing conversation. With that, I'm gonna just kind of pass it to Adam to you know, talk about your perspective on how the partnership works and how things go. So first of I all- I told you I'd be surprised. <laughs> yes, I, I've never heard that story before. Wow, yeah. wow. It's, it's an amazing thing to be an entrepreneur because you get to meet so many people and you get to build, if you're lucky, you get to build something real. But the distance between building something real to that thing really becoming a sustained long-term company that's profitable and that's actually making a difference on the planet is very big. And I don't think a lot of people are lucky enough to do that. And obviously, I have a lot of lessons from the past, and we're not going to focus on the past today. But one of my biggest lessons is you have to have the right partners, and you have to be aligned. So when Mark Andreessen actually officially, initially called me, what are you doing? And we actually talked for a year and a half before anything happened. As we're starting to talk about the investment, I said, Mark, it's very important for me that if you ever have something to say, I really need you to express it openly. And Mark was like, Adam, do you know how I speak? And now that I know Mark better, of course, Mark is going to say what he thinks very clearly. And I've shared this before, but after our first board meeting, Mark calls me right after and is like, Adam, I'm so sorry. I know it's only our first board meeting, but I have something to say. And I said, Mark, please. And he gave me a full criticism of a very specific thing that he saw me and the team do that he didn't think was a problem today, but could become a problem five years down the road based on his past experiences. And not only did we take it to heart, we thought about it, we answered it. We actually, I had the team write a long explanation about it. And it was just very helpful. And that's the relationship. And then Ben, when you said, can I join the board meetings? and sit in with you guys and be part of it also, we were like, wow, how lucky are we? We have Mark as a board member, we have Ben joining and, and helping us. And for those of you who don't know, Ben's abilities in, as, a, as an entrepreneur actually and a coach are unbelievable. But I tell Ben sometimes, I think you're a little soft with your entrepreneurs, don't hold back on me. To which Ben tells me, don't worry Adam, your psyche is different, no one's holding back. And then as you know Mark and the way he can see into the future and the way he thinks of business and categories and just one example about Mark and how this partnership works. First meeting with Mark when he came to see the building, he walks out and goes, Adam, I think Flo is a great product for enterprise. And I said, what do you mean Mark? And Mark said, they're not going into the office. We don't know how to get them back to work. They need corporate housing. This makes a tremendous amount of sense. He gave this example that an employee today on Friday finishes working with one set of employees on their Zoom screen, signs a new job on Sunday, then you open back the laptop on Monday with a new set of employees. No culture. And something that we like to say a lot is, you don't create memories on Zoom. And without memories, you don't create culture. And without culture, you don't create great companies. 
And you put all of that together, and I'm actually one of the luckiest entrepreneurs in the world that gets to have Mark and Ben as his partners. And something else I wanted to share, because I heard a question before about competitive, and you said you guys might need to get a little bigger. I want to explain to everyone something you might not know about A16Z or about other venture capital firms. As an entrepreneur, you don't expect your venture capital firm to do a lot more than just show up in the board meetings, maybe help with the next fundraise, maybe make some introductions. A16Z has a team for every single thing that we need. If it's HR, if it's culture, I called Ben with a culture question, he sent me a culture document. We wanted to do recruiting, my, my partner, Elon Stern, who's sitting right here, some of you might have seen over the last two days, who runs our digital efforts, and also a great human and a great friend. Um, he was running recruiting for us, and we wanted to bring in a world-class CTO, so we reached out to A16Z team, and they introduced us to eight different potentials that they thought were the best of the best. Of course, Elon wanted a meeting with each one of them. Then your head of recruiting was telling us that she was surprised. Yeah, oh, Caroline, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And she yeah. said she was surprised because most uh, entrepreneurs don't want to meet each one of them. But who are we to not want to meet each person that our partners, who not only gave us $350 million, but our real partners, suggested? So Elon took the time, met every one of them. We got to final, we then met a lot of other ones. We took six months, which is a very long time in my world because I like moving really fast. We got to the final four. I interviewed the final four personally, spent the whole day with them. I got to final two, and then I sent them to Ben without telling him which one is my choice. Ben interviewed, called me after and said, here's what I think, they're both amazing. First of all, he said, great quality of people. I'm very happy if this is gonna be our level of talent, we're gonna do really well. But then he chose the person that wasn't the one I was thinking. And I said, Ben, why did you choose him? And we can say his name, and yeah. I'm very excited, but his name is Scott. Yeah. Scott Ryder, I said, why did you choose Scott and not, uh, and not the other? candidate. A man said, you know, Scott has a special quality. When you tell him something that's not very smart, he makes this face <laughs> that you can tell that he thinks you're an idiot. <sighs> and, and I said, Ben, is that good? And Ben said, Adam, for a great culture in engineering, it's not only good, it's perfect. Because this way, he's not going to tolerate anybody who is less than extremely smart. And, to, and then great engineering teams, and Mark talks about this a lot, are 30-person teams. They're not 300, they're not 3,000. And he's gonna have the best 30 engineers on the planet. Well, long story short, Scott joined us. He started two months before he joined us because he was such a professional. He had a call with us every two days just to make sure he's coming in very ready. Interviewed all the engineers in advance, told us who he liked and who he didn't like. And he only came literally six weeks ago and already took our business to the next level and made an observation about real estate technology that we understood but not to the depth that he understood it because he has had the pleasure to have been in every time from he worked in Apple and saw the personal computer became a reality. He was then in Oracle and saw a big development there. He then worked in Netflix and was in charge of moving them to the iPhone and to the phone. So he saw that transition and his last job was at Meta for WhatsApp. He was head of consumer uh, digital and consumer facing and all the engineers that basically ran the 2.7 billion users. And when you have that kind of talent around you, and because of this partnership, not only were we able to recruit them, I chose the right person. That's the partnership that we have, and that's what A16Z brings to the table. And the thing that, uh, you know, on the other end of it, that is, is really amazing when we work together is when Scott comes in, the only worry I actually had about him was, look, when you have somebody who's got that highest standard, and this guy is so detail-oriented, like he knows how the code works, the architecture, he knows the skill set of everybody, like they tend not to come across as that. They're not the warmest, fuzziest people in the world. Um, but what Scott's been able to do already at Flow is call Adam when he's recruiting a great candidate and there's competition and they want more money and this and that and the other. This is not something Scott can do. Adam's the best in the world at it. And he'll move right in and do it. And like we already have the comprehensive understanding kind of across all of us on like how this should work. And so when we talk about with the right partnership, um, this is gonna be an entirely different outcome for our company uh, because the idea is amazing. And actually with that, maybe you can talk a little bit about like what is Flow? So I'm, I'm going to do a short version of Flow today, but on a very high level, when Corona occurred, the observation the team and me had is obviously you could, take the, you could take the office into the home, but you can't take the home into the office. 
I think we all realized in Corona that uh, we can get very lonely very fast and we're so connected digitally, we've never been more disconnected. And going into residential apartments seemed like an obvious thing. And really the way flow started is we actually saw a, a good trade. Cap rates were high, interest rates were at an all time low and that's all it started with. But the moment we bought it, we started walking into these buildings. And I couldn't believe what a great opportunity of actually leveraging the things that I know how to do best. You spoke about the kibbutz, but I come from a kibbutz. We'll talk about that a little later. And community for me and bringing people together is an obvious thing. And when I saw those buildings with 400 apartments, 600 apartments, they have swimming pools, they have kitchens, they have gyms. It seems like it should be the world's best place to live. Meanwhile, no one was talking to anyone. You add that to the macro uh, facts of 66% of 35-year-olds and younger in America, adults, are renters. They spend a third of their income. This, is, this number is so big, it's hard to comprehend. 66% of adults in America that are younger than 35 are renters. They spend a third of their income on rent, and there's no brand. What does that mean? A brand means there's something you appreciate. There's something that stands for something. There's an elevated experience. It doesn't exist. And why doesn't it exist in the, in the largest category on the planet? It doesn't exist because it's not a demand problem, multifamily real estate. It's a supply challenge. There's not enough supply. We talked a lot about governments and that you guys have now understand they need to deal with government more. Something I learned from you, whenever the solution to a problem is gonna be the government needs to change, that's a good one for us to tackle. <laughs> yes. So we go, so we- a Good be, one to bet against. Before that Corona, the there were approximately two million homes missing in the US. Today, the number is six million homes. High interest rates are making development slow down again. So that number is growing even higher. And the opportunity is unbelievable. You then, bring technology into it. You bring someone like Scott, you bring an engineering team, you bring my partner, Elon, you bring this great team. And we had this realization, technology for real estate was literally built in the 80s and 90s. I know it's hard to believe what it was. It was built for banks. It's actually an accounting system. And they just had to be able to count because they needed credit and they needed to, they actually owned a lot of these buildings, large landlords and banks. And it's never been changed. The way they built the entire infrastructure for the system there was a building, an apartment, and a renter. And the entire thought process was linear just like that, which means you can't use anything of new world technology. By building this technology in 2023 with new infrastructure, with new thought processes, with a new paradigm of how to think of all of it, suddenly you can see it vertically. One of the things Flo is doing, which also was an encouragement for Mark early on, we are the property manager. We are the technology, we are the brand, we're the payments company, very important because we said it's 34% of our residents' full income wallet spent, so of course we're the payments company, not just for the margin, but for the relationship, and for now we're also the landlord. By doing that, we have our own sandbox where we can prove everything we're doing. We're gonna have a board meeting in two weeks, so I don't wanna say too much in advance, but we're gonna show Mark and Ben that we started by solving really simple things like pricing by using new algorithms because the ones, the ones that the industry uses are so old or don't exist, by recruiting, by, uh, by renewals. Here's another thought that, that seems to be a new thought. Everybody in real estate always wants the resident to leave because the next one that's gonna come in is gonna pay higher rent. That is an old thought because the category for 40 years only rents increased. If you wanna build a community, I rather the resident stays because they're part of the community. Not only do I not need to lose six weeks of this empty uh, apartment, but more importantly, I can build a community. Once you add everything I just said to the new infrastructure that we're building, suddenly our resident is using an app to run the building that we're already using in, in our Miami location. And in the past, the resident would need three apps, one for, par one for parking, one for guest registration, one for payments, maybe even five apps, one for packaging. We brought it into one consumer facing app but now we're also building the backbones behind it. So now in very simple applications of AI, much simpler than what Mark was talking about, you put it on the phone and a resident is entering, they have their first day in flow and the app prompts the resident says, hello, I know you happen to be a trainer. There are a lot of people in this building that want training and they've told us that they really need a private trainer. We happen to have a gym. We also have private rooms. Would you like us to introduce you to five potential clients? If that person says yes, great. We have access to their phone. Would you like us to set the time? Would you like us to book the room? And that is just one example. 
We're calling it Inflow Community Commerce. We've launched it now in Miami. It's working unbelievably well. And what's happening, the resident wellness is a very easy topic today for the young generation. Everybody's showing up Sunday morning and, uh, and interacting. That's a little bit of what Flow is and what Flow is, Flow is doing today, but it's the tip of the iceberg. Another thing that I'm learning, we're winning on the basics, we're focusing on profitable buildings, and then we'll have leeway to grow this to many different places, larger even than just residential.